We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Hey, what's up? My name's Grant Kenoki. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and artist, and you're listening to Power 98.5. So I wrote a song. It's called Jealousy. comes out in a couple weeks. Pre-saving it now. But I'm going to show you how I made it or the progression of it, and check it out. My friends love rumors in the spread. So I wrote this song during the pandemic when it was just the height of it, and I went to Joshua Tree. Uh, Some friends were talking trash, and I need to get away and write. I found some places that I love. This is a live stream during the pandemic, learning the song. There are in boundaries there, and the stars, they're not so far above. It's jealousy, so let's see whatever works, I guess. Fuck it, get done. And now it's just making it. And here it is, jealousy. Oh, it's just jealousy you have. What makes you tear down the heart of someone who hasn't done you? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from here and all around the world. I am Stephen Cuoco, and you're listening to Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power. 98.5 satellite radio, whether it's on your iOS, your Android app, Siri, Alexa, and Apple Music. Come on now, number one in news on Apple Music. Can you believe it? Even though this is a music station, we do have talk shows. We've got Let Me Tell You with Lady T. We've got Resilient You with Alicia Pazzoni. And we've got myself. Uh, Exactly. (laughs) Thank you, Ryan. It's, It's... it's a true honor uh, to be here. Uh, we're, we're on live FM radio, streamer, stream it power985.com. I mean, all great things, power98.5. And we're covering UFC again. Uh, so we've got fight week this week coming up. And that was Eric Dash. Head on over to his Instagram at E-R-I-C-D-A-S-H music. Eric Dash Music, we're going to be talking about, I mean, my fellow New Jersey, my Northeast guys living in LA, uh, but it's it's great to have somebody on live today from the tri-state area from where I'm from. Uh, Eric Dash Friedman, if you haven't heard of him, you're going to hear about him now, but you definitely should have. Uh, he has been making music since his early teens. He started writing, get this, at eight at the age of eight and recording EPs at the age of 13, uh, playing shows all over the tri-state area now. However, it was when he was 23 that he had any success with his YouTube single, One More Love Song. Since then, Dash has taken up producing and engineering as well, working with tons of independent artists while trying to find his own sound. Well, there's no question. He's got it. He's got it. He's found it. Uh, His debut release, get this, this week, Jealousy, comes out Friday. You're not going to want to miss it. Big thanks and shout out to Sarah. She sent me the link. I got to hear the song. <laughs> That's what I appreciate with the the honor and the privilege to do what I love is I get sneak peeks into things and I got to listen to Jealousy. Uh, wish we could play it live today, but cannot do it. Uh, I'm going to tell you it's going to be worthwhile. We're going to find out more about Eric of what you need to do pre-save. Uh, you know, this Friday, June 16th, Jealousy comes out. Um to go back and where's my notes? Thanks, Ryan. Uh, t- 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 his debut release as an artist producer called Unspecified was a non-genre specific collection in the midst of that exploration. He then had a string of singles as well as an EP, Ship of Mine, which has over 400,000 streams. Eric, 
Welcome to the show, my tri-state brother. Thank you for having me, Stephen. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I had to head on over to your Instagram and, and pull that video and pull that sound bite off of there. And once again, uh, whether you're listening to us on the iOS or Android app or the website, there is that bottom icon. It's the messenger. If you want to give a shout out, share the love, have any questions for Eric, myself, just go ahead and send that message. All things Eric Dash, head on over to his Instagram and your TikTok as well as Eric Dash. Isn't it Eric Dash music as well on TikTok? Yeah, same, same thing. Yeah, for same sure. thing. I got to uh, check that out. I actually tagged you in it because we posted. I don't use TikTok the way other people do it. I just use it as a, um, I use my social media like a catalog. I just make sure I put the best content out there. I make sure it's informative. Um and uh, just making sure it's all there. So very impressed and proud of uh, what you're doing. Well, I appreciate it. I, I'm just trying to figure out the TikTok thing as well. I've had, I actually have had a lot of videos that I did with a, um, with like a production writing camp that I'm running and those are fun. And that, that is like the most fun for me for TikTok videos. Cause we like, we'll do like a song in four hours and like, we'll show the process of it. But but it's, you know, otherwise I kind of just go on there and just play my guitar or sing or do, some, do something basic. <laughs> and that's what, and here's, you're doing what it's meant for. For myself, like we'll create an audible out of this. And I like to make sure how I like my social media is to be timeless. Uh, what I find, especially being in the world of public relations and media, you know, I do my best in making sure that the content no matter when it was recorded or who I spoke to or what was happening, it's as timeless as possible without being dated. And I find it, what I don't like with social media, and I've gone into my TikToks, I've even gone into my Instagrams and deleted a lot of content because the fact of it is, is if something happened two years ago and the information's not relevant now, then why do I want to keep that on there? So I had decided two years ago, I'm, I'm going to take what you guys do in a music industry, which is brilliant, and focus on the quality of my catalog, whether no matter where it's at, Spotify, any of the podcasts, any of the social medias. And I want to make sure that whether someone's going back a day, a month, or say five years, the content and just like the clips we're going to take and build out today with you, Eric, it's going to feel as though... It just happened on a day that the person just listened to it or viewed it or read it for the first time. I love that. I love that. Yeah, that makes sense. We've, uh, we've done a little bit of research. I like to do a lot of research. I want to go back to what I really appreciate and like most and what I'm happy about is that you're using is Facebook and I was really surprised to see you've got a photo there of Kurt Cobain, and it brought back a lot of memories, especially that moment, that photo, that live that he did. Uh, is he an influence in your life? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Nirvana. I mean, I um, rock music is 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 my biggest influence, and I'm I'm not talking honestly. That's to tell you the truth, the rock music that's coming out today doesn't really inf influence me at all. Uh, for that matter, it's really like that commercialized rock music that doesn't really exist anymore. Um, it's like, you don't really hear that high quality, uh, rock music where the songs, the songs are really vetted out and they had such an incredible, uh, sound as well as incredible songs and so unique and Kurt Cobain, uh, he wrote these riffs that were so unique to him um, and had so much feeling and, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of angst that I really relate to, uh, in all of those records and especially Nevermind and, uh, you know, the unplugged MTV album is just incredible. Um, so like I've definitely done some like acoustic covers of them and I, and I've found, um, found myself a few times in, in those shoes. So yeah, I think that like all of that music in that era has really shaped me as an artist. And it's been interesting 
taking those those influences and really using them today because frankly it's not really a 90s era you know and and it's a loop era of like taking something that might be nostalgic but it's like a you digitally do everything and, and then you loop that thing and then you throw hip-hop beats on it so it's not so it's a very different style today and it's interesting towing that line of like trying to do what you truly love but then saying okay where does it fit today um and that's really what i tried to do with this album is like pull those influences into them so yeah i love kurt cobain and and that entire rock generation for sure were you back in jersey or back on the east coast during the 90s yeah i mean like i I, i'm an i'm an 88 baby so (laughs) you know i i grew up I grew up in Cherry Hill, uh, in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, right outside of Philadelphia. And yeah, I mean, I used to, I loved music as, at a young age. My my dad used to play like Pearl Jam in the car, like Pearl Jam and Cheryl Crow in at music club. And, um, you know, he actually, I remember him playing REM in the car. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of different things he used to play and he loved the Beatles and, and he, he didn't really, I guess he played some Nirvana. Um, but, but it wasn't too much Nirvana. Uh, he did have the unplugged MTV album, but I, I definitely like fell in love with music while driving around in the car with him uh, and my mother, and just like listening to their records. And um, you know, a lot of it was, you know, just rock music. So, and you know, they would take. I would go to these. Remember, there's the CD stores. They had the uh, they had the headphones in the CD store. You can go and listen to C- to records. You know, in the CD store, and I would go next to my dad listening to CDs um, and get a bunch of CDs. So. It was definitely um, something that we did together, father son time, <laughs> and and uh, yeah, I mean all of those. Re- I f- I think that also though, I think that when I really, um, never really thought about this, but like when I really started playing guitar, I wasn't really playing '90s music. I was playing more like the emo stuff, like Blink One Eighty Two and something corporate and Starting Line, and loved those bands. And then it wasn't until I became a little bit more like I, I don't know if this if it's the right word to say sophisticated, but with um taste, like later teens, like seventeen, eighteen, and I started delving into the Counting Crows and and remembering what my roots were. Um, but yeah, it's kind of how that how that started with the nineties. Don't you feel, or or how do you feel, or if you can, I don't know if you would agree or not. You're living in LA. And I find yeah. that the way music in general, how it affects people, how it translates, how it moves and inspires is very different from if you were to grow up in New Jersey or to have a life in New Jersey in the way music feels and how it moves you there compared to being in LA or Chicago. Have you found the difference or have you noticed how different music can affect life and lifestyle being in different geographic locations? Yeah. Um, I think different things matter and cultures matter. I think, I think this, this, the culture absolutely shapes what you listen to, especially like in hip hop. Um, you know, there's a cool podcast with uh, Kenny beats on talking to uh, Rick Rubin on like broken record and he's talking about like the etymology of beats and like where they come from and the difference between like these very subtle differences and how the culture affects it so it's definitely like you know if you're from chicago and from new york there's a there's a different there's different choices and there's different underground vibes that come from the idea of like making music but also i mean like los angeles you know we're in the wild wild west this is the rat race so like a lot of people here, they're going right now, for instance, they're like in the pop game and you'll hear a lot of these things that come out that sound just like one another. And um, if you don't do one another, um, then where do you fit? And everybody in LA is trying to fit. Whereas like if you go out to New Jersey where you don't have that mass culture of trying to fit and and you, it it kind of relieves a little bit of the noise, and then you take in a little bit more of your own influences, and then 
And then also your, your friends' influences will be different because of that noise doesn't affect them. And then you're going to see other music because of it. Um, especially like in country music, if you're in, in Nashville, I, I, you know, you're going to be uh, immersed in country, you know? So your choices is, it's, it's going to be very different, especially if you've lived there as growing up and it's nostalgic at that point, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think everything matters, uh, from numerous standpoints. Um, but yeah, my friends from New Jersey, um, couldn't care less about pop music, but then you go to LA where that's what's king and everybody loves pop music. So it's, it's neither, it's, it's all taste and yeah. Location absolutely makes it a factor. How long have you been in LA? About eight years now, eight or nine years. Oh, wow. For a second. (laughs) It's been a second. And I, I loved here. It's fantastic. And I, you know, I, I'm still split. I feel like I'm like a, I'm split between in my head between this like person that has like parents that have like normal quote on the quote unquote normal job, you know, and, and, and being an artist. And, um, and I feel like I'm split between LA and New Jersey and I'm just like this in this purgatory of sorts, but <laughs> I do love LA because I feel like I can be an artist here and people don't look at me like I have five heads, but if you talk about uh, artistry to someone that doesn't uh, know about artistry, they they kind of just they can't have that conversation in the same way. And it's it's good to be around people that you can uh, talk talk that with, you know, talk the talk with. Well, you do have Lola there; she's there with you. Well, Lola actually, <laughs> unfortunately, Lola passed away. Oh. Uh, yeah, so Lola passed away. So that that record, everything is nothing, was for her Lola because she passed away. Um, but but yes, Lola Lola was my beautiful French bulldog, and uh, she just passed in January. So, um, but she was the sweetest. <laughs> she was the best. Wow, great! I didn't yes, know great. that cancer had uh, taken her already. Yeah, 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 it had taken her. Oh. Uh, but but we had a good fight. We had ten months. We, got, we fought real hard. <laughs> um, she was a trooper. She was the she was the greatest. I'm gonna be honest. That is my favorite cover of you and Lola. I I, I really like that. And I don't know if I said that correctly. Um, you know that you know cancer had taken her. It's just that. It, let's just. Um, I feel like I need to correct that. I used to work as a vet tech for a no-kill animal shelter. And what's very important is knowing, not figuring out the right words to say, Eric, but being mindful of of what we say. And with that, I feel that in that situation, um, I feel that Lola and knowing how animals are is better than that, that nothing could have taken her. So I'm going to correct myself. I feel that if anything, she guaranteed because of who you are and your music and the type of person and and you're from Jersey and we know how Jersey people, we love our animals. Uh, You gave her the best life and she most definitely had, had transitioned the way that she wanted to guaranteed. I'm, I'm confident about that. Yeah. You know, I, I think that everything happens for a reason. I really do believe that. I don't necessarily think that we always enjoy the reason or want to see the reason. And I, sometimes things are really painful and it might take years to look back and see what the reason is, but you have to have faith in that. And, uh, you know, she was, she was ready to, she was, it was time for her to let go. So, you kind of have to just roll with the punches. And I had never had a dog before and I never experienced a loss before, uh, like that. So that was definitely interesting. Um, and I haven't, I haven't really written since, to be honest with you, I haven't been able to write in the same way. Uh, but I'm just starting to get back on writing, uh, now and it's, it's feeling good. Now, when you say you haven't really gotten back into writing, it is still fresh. Is it because you see life differently? Is it because you've had that beautiful experience to to have a being that unconditionally loves you and, and was there for you and you had someone to look forward to? 
is is that what you're still processing? Well, it's it was more along the lines of like when I write, I'm like super vulnerable. Um, so I was already, you know, it's an outlet for me, and I find that I find that um, if I'm in a negative space, uh, I don't necessarily want to validate those feelings all the time because the more you validate those feelings, the more real they become. And they were really palpable at that moment. So I've been kind of just like processing them, but I didn't want to go down the space of writing with it because it, it was just, it was just a, a, a dark feeling that I didn't feel like I didn't want to lean into it more than I was already dealing with. I wasn't ready to, um, but I found, you know, ways to deal with it elsewhere you know I, I was mixing records for other people and that's always fun um and producing for some other artists um and i've been you know busy making music and playing guitar on records and such but i haven't necessarily been writing my own music because i just needed a departure you know sometimes you need a break and that's okay you have to let your brain settle and i just started like i said writing again and um figuring out my next album which i will do completely diy this time and and it'll i'll be the sole uh engineer like my album that's coming out now i was not the mixer i didn't want to touch it it's like so much responsibility to produce engineer and uh and mix because it's just like you have too many emotions attached to it you don't want to make a mistake but this one i'm approaching differently and i will do it all myself and it'll come out quick quick and easy <laughs> how's your support system in la you got friends you have any family out there i have my father and my mother actually flew out to be with me when lola was passing so that was wonderful they were my angels um but no i i mean like i really don't have any family out here i have a lot of friends that i would call family um and i love them very much um but yeah i mean i i definitely am you know, no man is an island, but I'm definitely a very much uh, an island. <laughs> Makes sense. So, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a, uh, LA is such a big city with so many people that you can hang out with and like hang, but also in the chaos, it's also can be a lonely city. So you have to like, you have to make an effort. We're going to go into and talk about jealousy very Let's impressed. I got the opportunity to hear it. It feels very different from everything is nothing and two steps, which I like. I like it when music artists where you guys play and indulge and investigate your creative side. Mm -hmm. What's the difference or what separates or sets it apart when we think about jealousy, which is coming out this Friday compared to your other tracks? Um, well, I think that like the roots of, of, of like what, where the influence falls with jealousy is very different from those records. Um, you know, in terms of the sounds, like it was just a band in a room. What you're listening to with all these records is the same band. Nothing's really like the, the pedal choices are a little bit different here and there. And, and what we're playing is, but it's all the same drum kit and it's the same guitars and the same, you know what I mean? It's the same sounds. So, and, and it does sound very different though. And a lot of that has to do with like the attitude of how it's being played and their influences. So like, you know, two steps was like, is like a, an amalgamation of like counting crows and no, no one and, um, counting crows and, and, uh, Queens of the stone age, you know, it's like this hard rock hitting kind of thing but with like this campfire chord thing going on. And, and you know, that's how that kinds of com comes across, but, and everything is nothing is, is a very, um, you know, when I was writing it, it was very like a Bruce Springsteen kind of like, and I didn't even notice that my roommate told me it sounds like I'm on fire. So we, le we leaned into that kind of vibe, but you know, it turned out sounding to me like the police in, in some kind of ways, you know, and just the tones that we were going after. And um, this one, for me was extremely i always had a very strong vision of that i wanted it to be a mixture between um 
the chili peppers and uh, new radicals. I don't know if you know the, the new radical song. You get what you give. I don't recall. It's a, it's a fantastic song. And there is a piano in that song that kind of really bridges the gap. So like when we cut this, it was very bare bones and very like, you know, just a rock band. But then I, I wanted it to be this new radicals nineties kind of anthem. And that's why the piano comes in because I tried to make it sound in that vein. Um, and I love, I love that piano. That piano is my favorite part about the song. Um, how it lifts it and everything and the energy of it. Um, but yeah, for, for me, it's, it's really in the influences and the attitude. I want to read this one part here that was uh, sent to me and I, going to pull it up now. Here we go. Jealousy is not just about learning to live in your own skin and not taking out your own traumas on other people. We shouldn't validate every feeling we have just because we have them. That's ridiculous. A lot of our emotions are actually hurtful and by validating them and giving them fuel, we wrongfully hurt others. I've hurt others and I've been hurt. I couldn't continue to live that way when, they, when, it, when it became overwhelmingly apparent to me. So jealousy is about living better. It's about treating others how you want to be treated. What an incredible concept that we were taught so young in one ear and out the other. I found that it's, it's a little bit longer, but I found that section, that part in itself powerful. And, uh, and as you had stated earlier, palpable. Do you want to extend to that? Yeah. Um, yeah I, so like, I appreciate that. I, you know, I was, you know, which I mentioned the, the validating feelings. And I remember writing that it's still fresh in my mind. And that's why I said it again. But, um, you know, specifically, I remember like I was sitting at a table with some friends and we were in Franklin village in, in Hollywood. It's like, I think Holly, Hollywood Los Feliz cup, uh, cusp. And, uh, I remember like going to dinner and then, or like, it was like a, you know, happy hour and then went home and then I heard some people were like talking trash, as I mentioned in that clip that you had. And it really bothered me. And this was, um, right before the pandemic hit and I, then I started writing this lick for jealousy and I started writing the song during the pandemic with this lick. And I thought about that moment and I thought about like, I didn't do anything wrong to these people, but they were, there was insecurity. It was whatever. They just running mouths. And I find that happens a lot and people just, you know, they talk to talk, whatever, whatever the reason is they're doing, you know, and, there's a lot of that and I don't necessarily think it's malicious. Uh, I think some of it, sometimes it's just like it's idle hands. Maybe I don't even know what it is, but, but I feel like we have given ourselves reign to say whatever we want, say whatever we're feeling. And we don't take responsibility because, you know, people have misinterpreted what Freudian uh, psychology has said about, about like venting and letting out feelings, but it's like, it's not what it's about. And, and, um, it's, it's important that we check ourselves and we don't talk wrongfully or poorly about someone, uh, just because you feel it in the moment when, you know, it might, it might, it might not be valid. And, um, you know, so I think that emotions today when it's like they're running higher than ever there's so much radical thought <laughs> thrown out there and it's i don't necessarily think that it's all okay just to just throw it to the wind um because it seems quite reckless to me um and that's really what je jealousy is about it's about that experience it's about finding a place like i went out to joshua tree to write it and the second verse is about that because i found a place that like i can breathe and get out of the city and uh not be part of this rat race um and you know it's it's about just um i guess unloading and and and, and screaming for uh 
I guess vindication. Um, but yeah, that's that's the truth of the of the song at its heart. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you for being with us here today. Uh, like I said, if it was already out, we would do a live music drop. But no worry, the wait is going to be worth it. Uh, what would you like to share? And oh, you're welcome. Go ahead, Eric. No, that's it. I was just saying thank you. <laughs> Uh, what should we know? Where where can we find it? Where can we get it? Yeah. Okay. So Jealousy, it's going to be on all the platforms. It's going to be on Apple. It's going to be on, on Spotify. Uh, I I will release uh, stuff on Bandcamp soon. Um, and I will be in, in, in September, there will be some merch. And there's going to be, I, I plan on releasing a vinyl for this record. And um, yeah, just keep on checking out my Instagram. That's where I'm most active. I do post on tiktok sometimes and you can message me there but i'm most active on my instagram and you're gonna see a lot of music from me this is just the just the beginning of me finding myself as as an artist and producer and um i'm even working on another uh album right now you know and i'm gonna just follow it up and i'm just gonna keep on just keep on hitting it because that's all you can do especially today um so just keep on checking in and i hope that you like the music Absolutely. And any touring, anything happening soon this summer? Um, I'm looking for a tour. So if there are any booking agents that are listening to this, <laughs> <laughs> let me know. I'll, I'll hop on and, and uh, pick up my guitar and do my best with it. Um, but I'm playing at Harvard and Stone on August 11th, which is a it's a rock bar in Los Angeles. Um, it's a great rock bar in Los Angeles. It's like the same owners as Davey Wayne's, which is, I also play at Davey Wayne's a bunch. Uh, that's like a seventies bar. And, um, so I'm playing at Harvard and Stone on August 11th. And, uh, after that, I'd like to play at the Troubadour. Um, so talking to them and seeing if we can get a date on the books. I, I'm greatly appreciative of not only the time, but it really warms my heart. Uh, you know, to have another Jersey guy on here. And there's a lot of incredible, beautiful, um, intelligent music artists out of New Jersey. And, you know, back in uh, the eighties of the Bon Jovi days, we used to get a lot of recognition. And I think people have uh, really misunderstood that the Northeast has a lot of hidden gems, but you don't find out about them because for some reason it takes to, you know, you guys either move into Phoenix or LA or, uh, you know, even here, you know, out of Vegas, there's music artists that move out and to even go to Canada. Uh, so do you find that LA has served you much better as a music artist than having or being in New Jersey right now, or do you feel that something needs to give to where more music artists out of the New Jersey, New York and Pennsylvania area need to get more of the spotlight on them somehow? I think, I mean, that's a fantastic question, by the way. Um, I think that, you know what, LA is particularly good for music because there's so many musicians here. So you can, you can learn from one another. Um, when you're in New Jersey, the problem is there's tons of smart musicians and people that are there, but there's not the most, there aren't the most rec educated record makers though. That's the biggest difference. So like when I was growing up, I didn't even know that mixing, mix engineering was a thing. Like the EPs that I would release sounded like crap, you know, and, and they were beautiful pieces of crap, but they sounded like crap. I didn't even know that you mix it. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know about certain things that were so simple that 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 ruined my records. But would have they could have been way even better. Like I had no idea, and it's because no one told me, and and I I didn't go to school when I was a kid, you know. And I think that out here there's a lot more uh, education as to what you do, and that's important. Um, and I think that today it's a little bit different because there's so much technology and so much access with YouTube and as to what you do. So you can, you can learn those things much easier today 
and, and there's definitely uh, the gap has been bridged. But I still think like, you know, more surface area here for 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 learning in terms of the amount of people that you can meet and learn from. And that's the that's the honest best um way that i've learned it's being in these professional studios and seeing into these iconic sessions and looking at these uh looking into the multi-tracks and seeing how immaculate they are and um seeing what the level it is that you need to be in order to hit the ball um it's very high and if you don't see that level then you might you might get you might get a win um and you might do well but you also see a lot of people like having like a TikTok thing now today or whatever, and they're they're getting beats from YouTube or Beat Stars or whatever they're doing, and they don't really know how they did it. It's not like a formula that they they. It's not like they executed and it was purpose. It was they just didn't. And it's the chances that they do it again, well, let's see, you know. And that's where the education comes into play, and that's why I like Los Angeles because there's enough people here that around you to educate yourself but after you do educate yourself if you can get that in, in east coast and you found your place fantastic i was never able to do that and i don't know anyone that has been able to do that but you know what i mean it's like if you're over i'm sure there's tons of people that get analog gear and do it indie and put out amazing records all over the world and it is more accessible than ever today so it is absolutely doable um it's just, it's not as in your face. I appreciate yeah. that perspective. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's perfect. Perfectly expressed. Seriously. I, it's, um, I think it's one of the, if I've ever asked that question before, which normally like I would need to have someone from New Jersey to ask that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, uh, I, I felt that it, it, you opened yeah. up my mind to where, you gifted me a, a, a perspective from your lens and uh, your viewpoint that's very much different. And um, I appreciate that. Well, thank you for, for having me. Thank you for listening. And thank you for, you know, extending that courtesy. I'm glad that you like the song and, and, um, and to talk to you. You deserve it. It's, it's, it's exciting. And, you know, you've got a home here now. And uh, thank you so much. You're, you're very welcome. All things Eric Dash, head on over to his Instagram. It's TikTok, E-R-I-C-D-A-S-H Music. Eric Dash Music. His link tree is there. You can go ahead and there's a tab, pre-save Jealousy right now. Uh, launches this Friday. Uh, also, you can get to the Apple Music. You've got Eric Dash on Spotify. The TikTok, everything is there on the link tree. Eric Dash, music artist, producer, writer, extraordinaire, and one of the best representatives. I, 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 I'm going to say fresh out of New Jersey because it's brand new to me. However, you've been around for quite a while. And actually, we did get a, a message in. Um uh, Colin had said that uh, he's heard your music. Uh, Colin Walker, he's a, he's also a music artist. He's out of Texas. Um, so oh. he's given you and, and gave you a shout out. I just want to let you know that. Uh, hi, Colin, and, and thank you for, for sending a message in. I'll have, he, to check out, I'll have to check out his music. If he's a music artist, I'll have to, I'm going to look up Colin Walker now. Yeah, <laughs> uh, his uh, Instagram is C... Milligan, C M I L L A G A I N. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, share this with you on Instagram. Please. Eric. Yeah, contact him. Mm -hmm. uh, let him know. I just sent it to you. Let him know that um, I read what he wrote. And uh, that could be a really good connection. You never know. Yeah. You never know. You really don't. Mm -mm. You really don't. I'm finding him right now. Let's see. And he's breaking he's a, out even more. So fantastic. Yeah, I see. I see him now. He's a. Uh, mm -hmm. He's. And is he? A, he. I think he's a family man. It's not loading yet, but I feel like I've seen some kids there. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's got a daughter. Yeah, single dad. He's a nurse. He's, he lives in Texas. Fantastic. 
That's fantastic. I'll have to check him out for sure. It's awesome. Perfect. Any closing thoughts? Yeah. Um, you know what? To all the indie artists out there, keep at it. You know, we are the tastemakers and you have to remember that. And, and I um, implore everyone, whoever is making music, don't just make something because you think it works. Make it because you love it and do something that works for you. And that way you can shine and it won't be someone else's thing. It'll be your thing. And that's what's most important. Wow. <laughs> I don't want to ask you another question because that ended too well. <laughs> <laughs> um, who would you like to give a shout out to? Um, I'll give a shout out to my parents for the, all of their uh, support. Um, because, you know, being a musician, independent or whatever you're doing, you need to have your rocks. You do. And they have been mine. Um, so shout out to them. Love them very much. And uh, yeah, shout out to Sarah for, for introducing me to you. And uh, you know what? To, to everybody that was involved with this album, uh, thank you. And to everybody that's going to be involved with the new one that I'm making, which is going to be, trust me, it's going to be an incredible departure. I'm going to go wild and there are no rules and it's going to be a mix of the past and present. And that is going to be interesting. Um, so uh, shout out to everybody that's going to jump on board and uh, take part of that because it's all it's all just DIY people that, that believe in me and want to uh, join me on this. And that is something I'm extremely, extremely grateful for. So thanks to them. I take it you're going to be doing that this year. That's coming out. Oh yeah, I'm going to do that over this summer. I'm going to. I'm. It's not a marathon. It's a sprint for this one. <laughs> well, I'm excited. You've got to keep me posted. You've got my direct contact, so don't hesitate to reach out anytime. And if you have any questions, seriously, uh, let me know as well, because uh, you know I'm you know involved in alongside you know working in. Uh, reality TV. And for myself, I want to get uh, into television and film uh, as an actor doing scripted or unscripted work, you know, adding mm -hmm. something more to my repertoire. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Well, yeah, I would absolutely reach out and um, keep you in the loop. And uh, that's fantastic. I didn't know that you were branching out and like that. And I'll have to watch out for you being on the screens. Oh, you'll, you'll know all about it. I'll be sending you a text. <laughs> uh, please do it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, it's fantastic. And I, I think we've got, I think we've covered a lot of great stuff. I mean, we didn't miss anything today, did we? I don't think so. I think everything, you know, we covered, we covered uh, some emotional things. We got, we got talked about the, some music and, the record making process and the song itself and, and talk about some good things. You know, the only thing that I, that we didn't cover is I, there's actually, a, um, I do mixing a lot for, uh, artists and that's usually where mixing and production. And that's where I'm living is a, so I'm an artist, but I also produce and mix and that's, that's how I make my living producing and mixing. So if you guys like my stuff and you like what I'm putting out for myself and other artists, you know, uh, reach out. I'm here. I will answer and I'll check out your music and, and no matter what, I will always point you in the right direction. Um, and or I'll try to at least. Are you take, or what is it? Are they going uh, to your website email or how are they connecting with you? They can, they can go to my email. At, it's still Eric dash music, the same thing at Gmail, or they can just message me on Instagram. I'll see it. I run a, um, I run a production and writing company called Crooked Teeth, and it's named that after Lola because uh, she had some crooked teeth. Oh. And we run, um, you know, three rooms at one time. I run three studios at a time over a weekend. We punch out like 20 songs each camp. Um, and we've done 80 plus songs and have a bunch of songs coming out from the camp soon. Um, and I have a, my buddy that's, I paused on that when Lola passed away, but I have my buddy that's bringing over an entire recording studio from Dallas actually and moving it into my house. I already have a great studio, but we're bringing in like forty, fifty thousand $50,000 worth of equipment from his studio 
and making one on, on crack over here. And then we're going to run the camp for independent artists to give people as many good songs as we can give them and give them a better chance. And I, it's my way of like, um, it's like a giving back kind of thing. Um, and, and it's a collective and I want to, you know, give people songs that they can use. Mm. Uh, so, you know, if you're interested in being part of that, they can reach out to me as well. Drop that connection one more time. Website, email. Yes. Uh, website is just, well, you just find me on, on Eric dash music, uh, on Instagram and Eric dash music at gmail.com. And if you want to check out the camp itself, um, it's called crooked teeth, uh, crooked teeth camp. So you can find that on Instagram. Awesome. 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 And thank you again, Colin, for the message. Uh, yeah, Eric's going to be reaching out to you. Do we have anything else? Let me double check. No. All right. Thank you to uh, thank you, Eric, for being with us today. I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you so much for having me. Always welcome. And thank you to everyone who tuned in today, live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power ninety eight point five. All things Power ninety eight point five satellite radio. Power985.com. Download the iOS or Android app. Tune in on Alexa. Add it in your Alexa skill. You've got Apple Music. Add Power98.5 on your Apple Music. Very simple. Very easy. Uh, unless you have an, a, an account with Apple Music, uh, everything else is free. Um, except for, well, obviously, I don't know like, if you got to have a membership with Alexa. But yeah, we're there. We're here. Have a great day, everyone, and remember, stay happy, speak in love, uh, make sure, and keep in mind, this is National Men's Health Month. I'm going to go back to my Instagram, and all things Stephen Cuoco, S-T-E-V-E-N-C-U-O-C-O. -C -O. Uh, you can go to my public relations website, stephencuoco.com. And also Power98.5, Power985.com, National Men's Health Month. Keep in mind your emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual well-being, your health, who you are. You just heard Eric. You know, he's gone through a lot of transitions in his life. And, you know, he's taken time and put a lot of responsibility in knowing when he needed those those moments of self-reflection and rest and um, no matter what field or industry you're in it really rejuvenates the soul i took a nap <laughs> about a 15 20 minute nap my body was like you know what we need we need to do something here and and i normally don't take naps and it served me well and thank god i knew when to get up because i didn't set an alarm and then 12 45 came along and i was like oh but it that jolt boom felt like a a shot of espresso. Uh, I think, I believe there is going to, isn't there, Ryan? Yeah, I believe there's there's supposed to be another episode. There should be of Resilient You with Alicia Pazzoni. Let me tell you what Lady T, uh, the YOLO effect. Um, that was a really good episode. That was just on this last weekend. I believe she's doing every other week. So if it's not this Sunday, it's going to be the following Sunday. You can check the schedule of any upcoming shows, any DJ events, whether it be on the iOS or Android app or on the website. Uh, so remember, there is a schedule there. I am also covering UFC this week. Um, we've got, uh, it's going to be UFC fight night with Vittori and Kinnear. If I'm... I, I, I probably am chopping that up. Forgive me, guys. Uh, C-A-N-N-O-N-I-E-R. That's going to be on June 17th. Um, that's going to be at the UFC Apex. Uh, Vittori and Kananir. That's the best way I can put it. I'm going to find out the pronunciation when I go to media day tomorrow. <laughs> um, other than that, yeah, what a great show. Great day. Uh, enjoy the sunshine. If it's raining or it's not sunny where you're at, get some tea, hot chocolate, whatever. Put on a fire, get a blanket, and enjoy the, the wonderful, beautiful weather. And I know we're supposed to be getting more rain back in the uh, New Jersey, New York area, I believe, by tomorrow. Have a great day, everyone.
Find us on your socials and let's connect.